September 25, 2013, Council meeting order at 6.33 p.m. this evening. We will have the invocation by Elder Chauncey Brown, pastor of the Greater Williams Chapel Free Will Baptist Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance with Councilman Maldonado and the Police Explorers. Would everybody please stand? And if I could ask... our heads bowed. Dear wise Father, let us first thank you on behalf of all of us who are gathered here in this place. We thank you for the many and bountiful blessings that you've given us. We thank you for life itself, for the measure of health that you've given us to fulfill the calling and the friendships that you've given us in our life. We thank you for the ability that you've given us to be useful in the work and the honor blessing of the responsibilities each one of us have. We thank you for the ability to have freedom and to serve you and to do your will. As your scripture said, that we as citizens ought to obey our governing authorities since they have been established for the very authority to promote peace and order and justice. Therefore, on this day, we pray for our city officials, in particular to this assembled council. We're asking you to graciously grant the wisdom that they may govern in conflicting interests and issues of our times. The sense of welfare for the true needs of our people, a keen thirst for justice and righteousness, confidence in that which is good and fitting, the ability to work together in harmony even when there are honest disagreements, personal peace in their lives and joy in their tasks. We pray now that this agenda that is set before them today, that with the surety that they may counsel and may rule for your people things that are right and just in your sight, that every citizen of Homestead may live a love and peaceful life. We pray all these blessings in your precious son Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Elder Brown. Thank you, Police Explorers. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Waldman. Councilwoman Fiatos McCormick. Yes. Councilman Shelley. Here. Councilman Williams. Here. Councilman Maldonado. Here. Vice Mayor Burgess. Here. Thank you. Go to public comments. Anybody from the public, please state your name, address, and uh, you'll be limited to three minutes. Thank you. Kevin Sullivan, 1860 Southeast Sixth Court, Homestead. I'm here tonight to say a word of thanks to our fantastic Homestead Police Department, the chief, the captains, and all the detectives. We've had recent incidents over on the east side, and it over 20 years of living in this community, I don't think, Chief, your department has shined any brighter. Mm. So for that, I want to thank you. And I also want to thank you, Vice Mayor Burgess, for all your work on the behalf of the citizens. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Yvonne Knowles. I'm the chair of the Centennial Steering Committee. I'm here with Mrs. Ruth Campbell, a fellow member of the Centennial Steering Committee. We're here to invite the public to our upcoming October 5th event, the Homestead, our first Homestead Book Fair. 
at the Homestead Centennial Book Fair this year, and we are launching the Homestead Book, which I believe all council members have received a copy of. I hope you've had enjoyed reading it. And it's going to be available on sale at the book fair. This is Saturday, Saturday October 5th from 4 to 8 p.m. in downtown Homestead Historic District. We have some wonderful speakers coming to talk about their books. And of course, Seth Bramson and Bob Jensen, the co-authors of the Homestead History Book, will be there to sign copies and sell copies to the public. So please come down and enjoy our first ever book fair in downtown Homestead and celebrate the centennial. And Mrs. Campbell, let's just say a few words. It's high excitement about having a book fair. This is our first. And I'm hoping it's our first, but I'm hoping that I'm already looking forward to it for next year. Uh, the book is pretty exciting, and they are available at the Town Hall Museum. And, and they're only $20, including the sales tax. And we are enjoying it. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Uh, greetings, Council. Uh, I'm Mike Goodman, 1700 Southwest 301st Street. I'm here with Jonathan Freed from WeCount. And um, uh, I'm uh, kind of the spokesperson for a, um, a coalition of community organizations in Homestead, including WeCount, the First United Methodist Church, and uh, the Florida Farm Workers Association. Um, several months ago, we proposed a municipal ID card program, and you were originally slated to vote on that proposal this evening. Uh, we have asked that you temporarily postpone that vote. Last week, I had the privilege of traveling to Oakland and Richmond, California, with uh, city manager uh, Gretzis, his right hand, Julie Richards, I have a here somewhere, um, Homestead PD's Captain Marie Kent, uh, as well as Councilpersons uh, Williams and McCormick. Hi, guys. Um, enjoyed getting to know some of our, our city staff here. Um, at any rate, we went there to investigate the MIC programs in those cities. And what we found were two exciting programs with a significantly broader scope than the one that we had proposed. Uh, they have added a prepaid debit function to their mix, which requires that the banks and the card users themselves pay for the ID rather than taxpayers. And we, quite frankly, really like that idea. Um, it also strengthens the focus of the mix from merely documenting the undocumented to banking the unbanked. From a civil rights perspective, the ramifications are huge. Many of the poor and marginalized people in our community exist in a cash-only culture without the savings, security, and convenience of high-tech banking. This economically lower echelon in our, in our community are riddled with low balance fees, um, non-sufficient funds fees uh, by traditional banks, and, um, uh, and that's if their credit even allows them to bank at all. This $15 card not only identifies um, the user according to standard OFAC and FDIC regulations, but for $5 a month, uh, it allows the user to enjoy the use of ATMs, direct deposit, phone and internet banking, as well as free money transfers. In addition, this system via MasterCard interfaces with everything from police databases to airport kiosks, truly and succinctly identifying its user. Um, while for some, um, uh, this offers the freedom and dignity of identification, for others, the blessing of affordable banking. And for others still, for more established citizens, it promises a priceless measure of security. Our coalition is more excited than ever about the Homestead MIC program, but because of the newness of these kinds of programs and the added complexity of banking and interfacing systems, we need more time to let this emerging industry incubate while we work on proposing the right card at the right time. Along with the city manager's office, um, we uh, uh, have rolled up our sleeves and we're working harder than ever to bring you a comprehensive proposal that's viable, vetted, relevant, and meaningful. So thank you. We will report back in six months. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Jennifer Colburn, and I'm right here in Homestead in Arbor Park. 
And I just want to share a quick story with you. Um, my family and I moved here back in 2007 from Long Island, New York. And I was in a complete culture shock coming from New York, coming to Homestead. We felt like a fish out of water. And we were thinking of moving back, and a year later, we met Councilman Elvis Maldonado. He was one of the reasons why we stayed here. Um, not because of his friendship, not because he helped us, not because, just, just because he was, he's the heart of Homestead. Um, you can tell by when you look in his eyes that he loves his home. He loves his hometown. Um, I'm a part of this community because of him. I'm a small business owner, so he's helped me grow my business. He's helped me just being a friend, being there. Um, this town needs more people like him, and for after six years of being here, I actually call Homestead home, and I'm proud to, to do that. Um, Elvis deserves another four years, and when you go on election day, pound 41. So I'm asking the rest of you to support him. Everybody get on the E-train. <laughs> Next stop, seat five. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Vice Mayor and the Council. My name is Elder Jerome Warren. I stand here today in representation of the Southeast Bay Minister Alliance. As you may remember, the Southeast Bay Minister Alliance hosts a Hallelujah Night every year, and we host it between the cities of Homestead and Florida City. The mission for the Southeast Day Ministers Alliance is to provide spiritual guidance, activities, opportunities for residents of this community that will have a positive impact. SEGMA also awards religious leaders in various denominations and ethnicities to become significant with the denominations and progress of the area in which they serve. In efforts to continually provide safe alternatives and to keep our children off the streets during the Halloween season, the youth leaders from the home state and Florida City communities, in conjunction with SEGMA, will team up to present the Hallelujah Night again for 2013. We are asking for the city of Homestead to help us, and we are asking if the city of Homestead could give us $2,000 to help us in this event. This is a very costly event, but it's very worth it. As Elder said before, we can't complain if our children turn out bad, if we don't do anything to help them. And Halloween is always, always a, a, a very treacherous time. So we're trying to do something. We're trying to help our kids be safe during the very dangerous night. And we really thank you so much for your help. Would you like to say something? If not, thank you so much. Have you um, spoken with anybody in the manager's office? As of now, I haven't, but I will. Okay. Who, who yeah. would I need to? I would say, uh, well, you can call up and ask for Mr. George Gretzis. He's the manager. George Gretzis? Yes. He's right here, and he could point you in the right direction, and, and uh, maybe you can supply him some more details as to what the money could exactly be used for and things like that as we move forward. I'd be glad to. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Danny Molina, and I'm here with my mini-me, Jeremy. Uh, we're here to support Elvis Maldonado. He's uh, running for city council for re-election, uh, seat number five. And uh, Elvis has been on the council since 2009, and uh, I know that his main priority has been uh, to improve the educational system uh, here in Homestead. And uh, I'm sure you've all seen uh, the great uh, quality schools available to our kids these days. Uh, my son went to uh, Waterstone Elementary and he just started going to the new school Everglades Preparatory Academy. Uh, in fact, uh, last night uh, was our open house and uh, I was pretty impressed with the uh, turnout last night. Uh, and I want to give credit to Dr. Ferringer 
uh, the principal at uh, Everglades, uh, she showed great leadership and gave a great presentation last night for us. Um, you know, it, it was a beautiful thing last night to see uh, all the parents out there and the enthusiasm the teachers had. And uh, I even saw uh, Elvis uh, last night uh, with one of his daughters. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure um, if you guys know Elvis's story, uh, but Elvis is a single father. And uh, let me just say that uh, he really gives us dads uh, a good name. Uh, so uh, this week I'm voting uh, number 41 on the ballot. Uh, because I believe in Elvis, and I know that this city has a lot of room for growth, uh, but I know Elvis is going to take us in the right direction. So if you haven't decided yet uh, who you're going to vote for, uh, we say vote for Elvis. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, have a wonderful evening. Thank you. My name is Mike Rice. I'm a local contractor in Homestead. Uh, I was just thinking about the first gentleman we had here with Fraser's Police Department. I was just wondering if he has any tickets that are outstanding. Uh, first thing I was going to say to you is that I'm not running for mayor. Just want to make you perfectly clear. Uh, and I'm not going to give any political thing this year. <laughs> my main thing here is myself and some GCs. I'm not a GC. I'm a contractor for other things, fencing. But uh, we need a booklet to let people know when they open a shop here what they do. We try to help three licensed, con uh, licensed uh, people in Homestead and these contractors are unlicensed. They're not supposed to be putting up signs. They're supposed to be doing certain things. I'm not going to mention their names because <coughs> it's not fair. But I think the police department or the code enforcement, if they see anybody doing something, should stop and say, are you licensed for this and check on it. I did speak to the captain about it a few days ago. And also, um, they, they, uh, that's basically what I was going to say, is that you've got to have a brochure of doing it and make sure these licensed contractors are uh, licensed to do a job. The brochure's important. That, that is important. Otherwise, the contractor, if he doesn't pull a permit, that poor person's going to get fined. Let's put the permit up. That's basically it. You don't have to clap. Councilwoman Walden. Right. I just, it, Ms. I, I've known Mike forever. And I, he called me about this, and I, did, I didn't get a chance to tell you, but I did speak to Joe Cordino. I don't think Joe, is Joe here? He just stepped out for a second. But he wants to, t he wants to get with you, and yeah. there is some sort of a pamphlet in place now, but you know, he wants to talk to you so maybe we can update it or whatever needs to be done. So your suggestions were not taken lightly. Or, uh, you know, no, no, I want you to know that we're taken right. lightly. And um, the staff is willing to... He did call me tonight. And also your... Oh, he your, did. Your, okay. uh, um, Heather, was it? She called me tonight. Spoke to Perfect. Perfect. But one thing I'd like to say also, Mr. Lambert has gone. Good man. And the man you have in charge is also a good man. Well, in other words, he can talk to you and he can explain things to you. That's what we need. Well, Mr. Gessis, did you hear His that? His name is, yeah, Sal. I think he didn't hear that. Would you repeat it and talk into the mic? Yes, yeah, Sal. Mr. Gessis didn't hear you. Oh, is he? Okay. The man that you've got in charge now took Tom Lambert's place. Um, he's a very, very nice gentleman, very friendly and fair. That's what you need. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. And I consider that anybody that's not sure of something, go and ask before you do it. That way you get into trouble. And I think the one last thing is you still have Tom Lambert's telephone in other words, he's still speaking on the phone when you call his office. So this is Tom. You say a lot of stupid things, and next minute it's somebody else. <laughs> so I'll let you know. Anyway, just want to let you know. Thanks. So anyway, thanks, Mike, and uh, thanks for your input. I think you are running for mayor. Hello. I'm Marcia Maynard, and I represent Art South. Do you need my personal address? No? Okay. Uh, I'm here to talk about uh, Create on Chrome, which there are flyers all over town. And it's an event that we're having this coming Saturday, September 28th, from 3 in the afternoon to 6. And it, everyone is invited, although our focus is children. Children are going to get to do lots and lots of things uh, regarding art. They, we have a sanctuary, you know, Art South, you know, that used to be a Baptist church, I think. Um, anyway, there's going to be music teachers in there, dance teachers. Uh, the children are going to get acting lessons. They're going to get to get up on the stage and perform. 
and uh, there's just so much going on. Um, all of us artists are going to be doing things like face painting and arts and crafts and uh, letting the kids paint and um, letting them do all of the things that we do. There's going to be food trucks. Um, gosh, what else? I think the police are going to be there and fingerprint them all. We'll be covered for that, right, forever. And we're having a fire truck and um, tie-dyeing. Um, Marie does that. Musicians and dancers. Uh, the, the kids will have hands-on experience with the instruments, and uh, I think that's about it. Everybody's invited. This coming Saturday, 3 to 6, at Art South. Thank you. Hey, it's uh, Kevin Pedersen, 29430 Southwest 172 Avenue. How are you all doing? Want to do, uh, come up and say some good things. I want to thank um, the council, the city manager's office, for the way you all finished up on uh, Washington Avenue. It's, uh, you did a great job. And I got to tell you, as, as a business owner who owns property down there, um, you all were wonderful to work with. Any issue that came up was handled, has been handled. Um, with a smile and a, and a handshake, and I appreciate that. I, it's, it's really nice to do business that way. You guys did a great job. You guys really did. Um, and with that, then I want to turn a corner and say, um, I wasn't going to say anything tonight, but, um, and I know this isn't going to be real popular to say this, but as far as a municipal ID card, um, there are many people, just so you know, that don't agree with the city doing a municipal ID card. I'm one of those. My biggest fear of a municipal ID card is not for the individual who needs identification. It's the thought, because the people that come up here and talk about it, you constantly hear about bank accounts. And the, the thought to me, as a retired federal law enforcement officer who ran the biggest at the time undercover money laundering investigation for the country, scares me to death that someone could have a bank account without a social security number. So if that's the reason to open an avenue for that, especially in a world of terrorism, I think it's a big mistake for that reason and that reason alone. Now, I say that as a naturalized U.S. citizen. I am a naturalized U.S. citizen. So I remember when I was uh, in uh, elementary school and I went down and got sworn in and I had my naturalization papers and I followed all the rules. So I have a, that, a feeling about that. So anyway, that's my thought. Um, it does concern me if it's, if it's an avenue for bank accounts because I don't think that's what the federal law wants. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other comments from the public? Hearing none, seeing none, we'll close public comments. Mr. Manager, Mr. Attorney, any del additions, deletions, deferrals? Bowling Alley will be off. I know it was on as an addition, but uh, we're going to move that to the cap. Okay. And then uh, uh, we need to have one addition. Uh, we do need to have a discussion tonight on the uh, vacancy of the mayor's seat, so we need to add that in also. And we'll add it in at the end of the uh, at the end of the agenda. Thank you. All right. So we are on two. While we have a break in the action, I'd like to request executive sessions in the case of Atlantic Civil versus the City of Homestead, Lalay versus the City of Homestead, Homestead versus Lalay, and Lalay versus Stephen Bateman. Thank you. Duly noted. Okay, I will now entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, I would just like to say that tab two is kind of special to me. Uh, as, as myself and both Councilwoman Waldman had been talking to the attorneys prior to it, but George, once again, I just want to say thank you for accepting our offer to stay on as a city manager. Uh, I said last week, uh, two weeks ago, I think you've done a wonderful job for the city. And I continue uh, with those thoughts, and I look forward to working with you in the future. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Mr. Williams, I know you had some uh, concerns last week. Is there anything that you wanted to uh, Tab nine. Okay, so we'll do the uh, 
consent agenda with tab nine pulled off, please. That's the only one? That's the only one, Mr. Williams? Yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, seeing none. Motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Williams, go ahead with tab nine. And yeah, I uh, just want to um, go through the, um, the agreement and uh, uh, listen intently to what we're doing. A staff report. Staff recommends uh, that the council approve the attached resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a lease agreement between the city of Homestead and Homestead Main Street at 43 North Chrome Avenue, Suite 201, Homestead, Florida. Upon the execution of this lease agreement, Homestead Main Street, Inc. shall pay the city a fixed annual rent of $1. Homestead Main Street, Inc., a Florida not-for-profit organization, is seeking to renew a lease for the use of the Old Town Hall office space, which is located at 43 North Chrome Avenue, Homestead, Florida, specifically Suite 201, located on the second floor. The, prop the uh, property is for a one-year term with fixed annual rent of $1. On October 19, 20, uh, 2011, the Council approved Resolution R2011-10-116, authorizing the execution of the previous lease agreement between the City of Homestead and Homestead Main Street, Inc. And uh, home representatives from Homestead Main Street are here as well. My question is, um, I have nothing uh, against Homestead Main Street other than, um, because I think they do an exceptional and great job, but um, in dealing with leases for city buildings and, 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 and uh, organizations, how do we determine which organizations should be uh, to use the city facility at uh, a cost of a dollar a year? And then how do we determine other organizations in their concern to have to pay rent for providing a service to the community? How have we been able to justify that? Yeah, truthfully. Just a carryover, and we just carried it over. Okay. So a carryover. Um, okay. Uh, but going forward, with any other leases that may come up, how will you justify charging the amount that you're going to charge? What gives a certain organization the um, the right to not be charged? What measures? What tools are you using? to exempt organizations from not paying? How do you quantify that? And then how is that decision made? Basically, if we feel that we have previous direction from council and that there is some policy decision that was made in the past, unless we see some change in direction, we kind of just carry on with the policy. But for future things that are new, then we, we try to uh, look at it more competitively. Uh, but that, that being said, you certainly have the right to charge them whatever you want and or reconsider your previous board's uh, decisions. So that was... No, I'm not <laughs> interested in charging them because I think they do a great service and work. I'm interested in going forward other organizations that we have place amounts on. I'll be quite frankly honest with you. Uh, uh, we didn't see... Here we are uh, at a point to where I think they do a great service for the kids in the community, but yet we're looking to have them charge rent. But yet there's an organization that deals with Main Street that are doing a great service in their area, and we're only charging a dollar a year. How, do, how, how can that be justified? That is what, is what the question is going to be sure. going forward, because once we make this you know, issue to to allow this to happen tonight, which is going to go through, because I'm not I'm not against Main Street. I'm all for Main Street um, uh, and what they do. I'm just bringing it up as raised as the issue, 
and how do we create parity across the board to justify what makes an organization worthy to have rent charge and what makes an organization not worthy. Hey, truthfully, and I'm going to risk being the bad guy here, but if you want parity, you want equity, everyone should be charged. I say that, forgive me all, but that's the fairest way to do it. Or don't charge anyone. Right. Well, that's, 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 well, that's what I'm saying because I think now when you say that, that you give organization to come back and ask you and ask this board, well, what makes them so different not to be charged or for a dollar a year? And then what makes us so different not to be charged or to be charged? Yeah. I'm just saying you, you now we're, we're, saying we're being able to raise questions. If you're looking for distinctions, if like why is one versus the other, I could throw one out there, which is that there were previous agreements that when the renovations were done, they were going to go over there. So they had a certain understanding. That doesn't mean you owe them free rent for the rest of their existence. Right. But that's, you know, if you were looking at why them versus another group, there was apparently some previous understanding about where their home was going to be. That right. being said, the staff, all of us, as we look at revenue sources, we think you should charge for everything. That's right. Well, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm simply raising the issue um, because I think, I think there ought to be some kind of policy or some kind of fairness across the board, and then there ought to be some standards set because you give a credibility of an organization the right to come and challenge us and say what makes this organization so great to not be charged and then and providing a service for the residents of Homestead. And then what makes this organization, who's helping 100-plus kids a day um, in, in the southwest area, and then we want to charge them, you know, thousands of dollars of rent, what, tell me what is the, I don't understand how, it, what's the difference in one versus the other. So it's going to be interesting to hear how we justify that uh, to what ends and cause both nonprofits both operating nonprofit status, uh, both providing a service, an added service to the community, and yet they're both using homestead facilities. You know, so how do we as a board justify that with our decision? I just, I'm just calling us to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the conscious <laughs> of this board, of, of the council. I want to be the conscious. I want to get people to think about what makes it right for one and not the other. And, I, and I'll be the Scrooge here and say everybody should be charged so that you've got both sides of the, uh, the discussion here because the truth of the matter is whether it's fees or it's facilities or whatever, right. obviously uh, revenue stream is important for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's all. I, but I'm, I'm, I'm done with that. I don't, I don't have any objections to the Main Street other than the process of the, the contract and how do we shape that. Councilman Shelley. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I, mean, I agree with my colleague, Councilman Williams, as far as a process. I'm always a process guy. I, you know, I think the last hearing we discussed not-for-profits, you know, for me it was you know, making sure we do have those policies and procedures in place. The only thing I would say about Main Street, though, is that the way to differentiate is the fact that in most cities, at least that I'm aware of, Main Street organizations are typically part of the city function. They're either part of the CRAs, they're part of the city, the fabric of the city. The city actually funds a lot of these Main Street organizations across the country and so that's where I would distinguish it is that they are providing a city service typically um, that the city would be involved in. Now for whatever reason ours isn't, I think there was, you know, over, over the course of time it's been changed but, uh, but that's where I, I look at this particular organization but I do agree with you going forward in that we do need some sort of, of rhyme or reason to why we do what we do so that everyone's treated fairly so I agree with that but I did want to make sure that distinct, distinction was, was enunciated today as far as what I think for Main Street and that is because they typically are funded by the cities. Right. This particular one is not, but, but that's kind of where I look at that yes. you know, justification. Yes. Um, can I respond? Yes, sir. I'm not calling into question the, what Main Street does. I'm calling into question uh, about the contract and about the lease agreement. So even though we, we, we not only are we supportive, we give them funding through the CRA, but then we're providing a building too. Now, then, then there's an organization out there we're not giving funding for. We're just trying to put, help them provide a facility. So the framework in what you're saying and what other cities do, I definitely understand. We have, uh, over the course of years, provided much funding for Main Street and provided a facility. What I'm calling to conscious tonight is 
how and how can we distinguish between the two organizations? And I'm not even comparing the two organizations because I think they're very different and distinct in what they do. But what gives us a right up here to say that we get to charge them uh, a, a, a dollar a year on their lease? And, and both, granted, they're two different organizations that are providing two different distinct services. But uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a call to conscience and, and just practicality, what, what gives, how do how we make that decision to say they're worthy and not other organizations not worthy? That, that's all I'm saying. I, you know, I, I, that's what I want to place on the record. Nothing to do with Main Street itself. I support Main Street. I'm not trying to stop their, their contract. All I'm saying is, going forward, other organizations that come before us, we raise the question, raise the issue, and then other organizations that are, st are functioning within the city, do we have a contract with all of those organizations for a lease agreement that they're providing services in other departments? We don't have a lease agreement with that. So, so those are the kind of things that, that if we're going to do something like this, then it, it needs to be fair across the board for everybody. Vice Mayor? Yes. Uh, I would just ask, like to ask the manager if uh, you could provide us for any organizations that are working within that capacity that you'd give us at least a list, see who they are, so we could identify them and, and so that we could look into, you know, who's occupying our, our buildings and uh, and what capacity they're working. So any information that you could give us in reference to that would help out. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Tab 9, is there a motion to approve? Motion. A motion. Second. And a second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Moving on, Mr. Attorney. Yes, we have no queries of judicial items tonight, so you can move on to the legislative matters, please. Uh, that would be uh, tab 12. Thank you. Car 958, temporary banner sign fee waiver for NASCAR championship race weekend uh, promotional contest. Is there a motion? I'll move it. One move and second. Staff report, please. Yes, Vice sir. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Staff recommends that the uh, Vice Mayor and Council approve the request to waive all permit fees for certain temporary banner signs associated with the promotional contest for the Homestead Miami Speedway NASCAR Championship race. The South Dade News Leader has partnered with the Homestead Miami Speedway to promote the NASCAR Championships race by having a uh, race ticket giveaway contest sponsored by the local businesses uh, for the enjoyment of the community. This collabor collaboration aims to celebrate the large economic impact the race has on the city of Homestead. Uh, Doris Mentis of the News Leader has requested that the city uh, uh, waive the permit fees for certain temporary banners promoting the race ticket giveaway contest. The banners would be up between October 1st and uh, November 19th, the race weekend, and would be placed on the facades of approximately 40 or more businesses. I believe we did the same thing last year, um, and so uh, we uh, recommend that you approve this waiver. Thank you. I, like, I believe most of us up here received an email. Uh, Doris and uh, this, uh, the news leader had written us in uh, requesting this, so I asked if we put on. Um, is there anything that Doris would like to say? I mean, I want to tell you thank you for, for continuing and, and doing this program again this year and getting the whole uh, community involved. So, thank you. Um, questions from the council? I wanted to say, Doris, I enjoy reading your article every single week, and mm -hmm. I love it when, when you give us ladies at the Red and Women's Club a sneak preview of what it's going to be because I just look forward to it, and I pass it along to, to friends, and your inspirational story over the summer has just, just been so wonderful and inspired so many people. I don't think you've even realized how many people you inspired over the summer, and, and you, just, you just put yourself out there and tell it like it is, and that's why we love you, and that's why... You, I think you should be our community mm -hmm. sunshine person <laughs> because you just spread sunshine everywhere you go. And, and you did such a great job with the racetrack last year, and I can't wait to, to see what you do again. I just had to say that. Thank you. Any comments from the public, for or against? Hearing none, seeing none, I'll close the public comment. Any last comments from the Vice council? Mayor. Yes, sir. I just want to... Um, let, let folks know that I participated, my company here in Homestead, I participated and uh, 
I was uh, happy to be able to have my clients come in and, and partake in it. Many of them have not been out to the racetrack uh, being here for a long time, and they actually uh, joined in in, in their efforts and I had some of my clients go out there. So um, just kudos for uh, bringing this around the second time, supported it last time, so I'll continue to support it again. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, seeing none, call the roll, please, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Walner? Yes. Councilwoman Fiatros McCormick? Yes. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. The motion passed. Thank you. Next item, please. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, items uh, 13 and 14 are both uh, settlements of um, claims that you've discussed in executive session with the Vice Mayor Spears. I could read them both together and you can vote them at one time. Resolution of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving the settlement of all claims, including workman's compensation claims of Alfred McClendon, providing effective date. Resolution of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving the settlement of all claims, including personal injury claims of Carlos Navarro and Elaine. Eileen, Eileen Navarro and providing for an effective date. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion. Move it. So moved. There a second? Second. Moved and second. Thank you. Staff report? Yes, these are both uh, settlements. One of the workman's compensation washout claim that you discussed in executive session with Mr. Stetton. The second is with a personal injury cl claim resulting from a car accident that you also discussed with Mr. Stetton. Any questions from the council? Any questions or concerns from the public? This is a public meeting. Hearing none, seeing none, I'll close public comments. Any final questions from the council? Hearing none, seeing none, call the roll, please. Councilwoman Fairclaws McCormick? Yes. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Councilwoman Warman? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Next item. The resolution of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida, supporting the commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War, commending Miami-Dade County for expressing support for the November 8, 2013 parade sponsored by the Miami-Dade County Military Affairs Board, welcoming home and remembering Vietnam veterans, providing for an effective date. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. So moved and seconded. Thank you. Staff report. Uh, basically, I can, I can answer that. This was brought about by uh, Commissioner uh, Jose Pepe Diaz at the, our um, monthly Miami-Dade County League of Cities dinner, and they were just looking to get support and let the uh, Vietnam veterans and the Bay of Pigs veterans know that uh, the whole South uh, Florida, uh, especially Miami-Dade, all the different communities support them, so they were just asking for some support. Myself and Councilman Meldonado were there at the dinner that night, and I thought it would be a great thing for the City of Homestead to do as we have many veterans that live here, and we have such a great Veterans Day um, uh, parade and, and, and uh, uh, morning down here that morning, I thought that we should certainly support it. So that's how this came about. Any questions from the council? Just, uh, just a thought that I had in reference to this. I know that our, uh, our uh, veterans here in the, in the South Bay area in Homestead are very involved, in, and I'm wondering if they are aware of, of this and are, part are participating in it. That I'm not sure how the county is reaching out and get the word out, get the word out but um, we can certainly uh, uh, try to try to get some flyers and put it on our website through our PIO and, and try to get uh, perhaps uh, the, the news leader can run something for us about it and uh, we can get, try to spread the word. Okay. Thank you. Any uh, comments or questions from the public? Hearing none, seeing none, I'll close the public. Any final comments from council? Call the roll, please. Councilwoman Walman? Yes. Councilwoman Fiatros McCormick? Yes. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Next item, please. Resolution of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending resolution 2012 647 concerning comprehensive council meeting and agenda procedures by revising, updating, and restating provisions providing for conflicts, severability, Effective date superseding resolution 2012 647 on the same subject. Entertain a motion. Move it. And move there, second. And seconded. Thank you. Staff report. Yes, this is just a very minor change in our procedures to make it very clear that people can speak during the public comment section on any item on the agenda other than those covered by a public hearing. 
There was a piece of legislation passed by the uh, legislature this past session, and this, our procedures were very close, but it's a, just a small change in order to uh, comply with that. There's no other changes to the procedures. I just want to say thank you. This was sent down to me by the Florida League of Cities, and I knew, noticed that there was a little change. I, I forwarded it, so thank you for getting it on there and, and keeping us in compliance. Um, any questions from the council? Did we do it? Any questions or concerns from the public? Hearing none, seeing none, I'll close the public comment. Any final comments? Call the roll, please, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Pietro for comment? Yes. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilwoman Wallman? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. The next item I, uh, will be the discussion of the mayor's vacancy and how this council would like to proceed uh, with, with uh, what we would like to do. Uh, this comes about uh, the end with the situation that we have and the letter that I wrote to each and every one of you on um, August 30th, declining to accept uh, the seat of mayors uh, of the mayor uh, due, to the uh, due to the situation that it would have put me into where I would have had to enter into a, um, into a, uh, 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 a race right then and I wasn't prepared nor ready to do that at that time so because of that I had declined it and I thought that we needed a cool down period before we came and had a discussion about it but I think it's uh, uh, you know my letter stated that we would address it tonight so uh, we need to address it uh, uh, so I will start the discussion there are there are, are things in place um, different different ways we can go but before we, we go to the book I'd like to see if anybody has any comments or or ideas that they would like to see done and then maybe we can formulate them into some things that are in the code. Uh, does that sound all right? Yeah, sure. Do you want me to give some background? Uh, sure. Um, the last time I recall that we had anything like this, um, uh, it, it became quite controversial because of the procedure that was followed. And um, after that, after that, the well, first of all, yeah, after that, the council passed a very comprehensive procedure. Um, dealing with replacement of council members. Um, but at that time, there was not a procedure put in place for replacement of the mayor. So there's no section other than the section in your charter which says that you shall appoint um, a mayor. Uh, there's nothing in place. And uh, the procedure that was put in place for council members is quite uh, detailed. And there's, a, uh, there's an advertising period. Um, certain people have to submit applications. Uh, within a certain period after that, uh, the mayor then makes a recommendation to the council. There's a special council meeting or regular council meeting at which you know, the, uh, this that matter is discussed. Then assuming that the council uh, agrees with the mayor's recommendation, that person is then appointed. If they disagree, there's a procedure for that. Anyway, it's almost a, a, a full page of ordinance of an ordinance, but we have nothing in place for the mayor. So other than the direction of the charter that you need to appoint a mayor, that's about it. The procedure that was set up for the council, um, we were looking at it earlier, takes about, I thought we were up to like 20 something, over 20 days for the procedure that they use for council. The only thing I would say is that, um, as I, I, th I think what's important in the process is um, that it be very transparent and that the, the public is aware of what's going on and that people, if you're going to go through some sort of a process, you know, that the that the people are very well aware of the fact that there is this opening, that you will be considering it, and so that the public aspect of this is very, very important so that whatever you do is very transparent. Thank you. Um, Mr. Williams. Yeah. I mean, with all of that, Richard, you just said, by the time we do all of that, uh, November be here, right? I think if you followed the procedure that was set up for the council, yes, you'd be very close to the election. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad we talked about it, and uh, I think we could just wait to November. Mr. Shelley. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, two things. First is, as I kind of I concur with my colleague, I mean, I think that. I would rather let the voters choose who the next mayor is going to be, and we have a primary that's going to be taking place on next week, and then we have the general election taking place less than a month or about a month later. 
And so for me, I'd rather just wait, let the voters choose who they want their mayor to be, and that'll fill the vacancy at that point in time. You know, by the time we go through this process, the staff hours, the man hours, to, to try to choose somebody, to have them hold office for a couple days, it, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So I agree with my, my uh, colleague, Councilman Williams, and you know, I think we just let the voters decide and wait till the election. The second point, though, I would like to maybe get some clarification on either now or after this discussion, and that is I think it's clear to maybe maybe clarify how how the, the charter works, especially as it deals with the vice mayor, because I've spoken to people as I've been out walking, you know, and talking to people, and they're not really cons they're not really clear on how it works. And what I tried to explain to them, at least as I understand it, you correct me if I'm wrong, is that the, the vice mayor would have, if he had elected to take on the, the role of mayor, would have given up his seat in his current council seat as vice mayor, and as a result, uh, in this case, Vice Mayor Burgess would have served out the mayor's term for two months. But at the end of those two months, he would have been off the council. He would have had to go home. He would have given up two years of service mm -hmm. to this community to, in exchange for two months to be mayor. And I think that that message was lost. A lot of people don't realize that in this community. And so if you would just clarify or, or quantify that just so that they understand. No, I, I, you're, you're absolutely correct as the, uh, the way I think that the charter operates is that he actually would take the seat of the mayor. And that makes some sense when you have a long term, you know, a, a longer term available. But in this particular case, he would have, vice mayor would have served as mayor for, you know, a, a couple of months, at the, you know, and then a new mayor would have been elected. I also would say practically, I think that the vice mayor did us, you know, uh, you would have to, um, a lot of changes would have ne needed to be made that uh, uh, by staying as vice mayor, they don't need to be made. So for other, you know, in terms of staff work and in terms of other things, I think this was a, a practical approach yeah. to what happened. I just wanted to make sure it was clear because, again, I think it was, it was the public doesn't understand how this process played out, and so I think it was critical to, to, to clarify on the record so that everyone understood the decisions that had to be made, the tough position that our vice mayor was put in. So. Thank you. Councilwoman um, Bearcroft McCormick. I understand that we are theoretically not functioning as a full body up here in the absence of our mayor. But if we are to appoint someone, we have to be fair, impartial, and transparent. And in order to achieve those three things, we need time, and time is not on our side. So my position is, since we are in close proximity to the election, that we just forego appointing someone at this time and then wait to swear in a new mayor after the citizens in Homestead decide. So I am with waiting until um, the voters elect a new mayor for the city as opposed to me appointing one. Thank you. Councilwoman Walden. First of all, I just want to say that I think Vice Mayor is doing a darn good job. Thank you. I think you've handled yourself beautifully. Um, you had um, a lot of responsibility at the press conference. You had a lot of res you've had a lot of responsibility since then. Uh, probably more than we even realize because people come to you and ask you questions and and you have to speak for all of us. So I want to compliment you on the way you've handled yourself. I think you've done a really fantastic job. And if anybody was going to take mayor um, until a mayor was elected by the public, it should be our vice mayor. But unfortunately, our charter doesn't allow for that. So I'm just going to say that I think that our charter is very confusing. When it comes to vice mayor, people don't understand that you're on the ballot twice, that you, you know, I mean, it is so confusing. And um, you can ask my husband back there, because I don't know if he yet understands it. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, you should hear uh, all of us trying to explain it, you know, when we're, when we're forced to deal with it. Um, I'd like to see some, some revisions, or at least um, uh, the attorney give us his opinion as we go further. Um, it's a, you know, management review is a very important committee and, and um, it's up to us as a council to listen to the people. And when you're out there knocking on doors, you hear the questions and you know they don't understand. And like I said, most people, it doesn't matter, it just doesn't matter, it, it's complicated. It's very complicated. So with that being said, there's a process, I've been through that process before. Um, I would never just appoint somebody without interviewing everyone and, and the process I think would just take too long. I think it would take more than 20 days. And um, if I had a choice, I would choose Mr. John Burgess as our acting mayor. And in, 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 all, 
our reality, he is our acting mayor, I mean, as far as I'm concerned. So I think we're fine. I think we're going to be fine until the election. And keep up the good work. Thank you, Councilwoman Wolman. Uh, Councilman Maldonado. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, as my colleagues have said, time is basically the, the issue here. Um, I think we as a city, the way we've been performing the last month, and, uh, and I don't see anything pressing and where uh, bringing in a mayor at this time is going to make a significant change uh, in, in our day-to-day -day business and what we're doing here in the city of Homestead. So I, I support um, what my colleagues are saying in reference to I think time is the issue here. Uh, we're about to get in, we're going to do our, our primaries uh, at the end of this, starting tomorrow, and then October 1st is around the corner on Tuesday. So um, I think from there, you know, the city and the people will choose uh, the mayor, the next mayor, and so I'm okay with uh, waiting for that to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, not, not only is there a time of, of going through all the applicants, but there's also other things that, that come into play here. Our financial institutions uh, have to go. We have to go back and rework them with the signatures and the signature cards so that uh, checks can be processed. Uh, I, I guess technically we would have to change all our letterheads over again. Uh, with a name up there. So th there's a big expense that, that comes along with it for such a short period of time also. Um, so with that, I mean, uh, it seems that the direction is that everybody's comfortable in, in what we're doing tonight. Um, I, too, believe that there needs to be some charter review work done on, on how our vice mayor uh, uh, quest ballot question is. I believe we're unique to the, uh, the state of Florida is that we're the only one that does it that way. And I know, as, as Councilwoman Woman said, people are confused. They vote for you at one time, and they may not vote for you on another time because they think they vote for you once. That's all they have to do. So it is, it is a confusing thing. So as we move forward with whoever takes the uh, mayor's seat, uh, I, I believe that that should be one of the charter review questions that we look at uh, is that and, and that we get some clarification in, in how, uh, uh, and clean up the, the mayor's, uh, I mean, the vice mayor's responsibility of something like this uh, was to ever happen again. So uh, with that, I mean, it seems like we had the direction of, of the majority of council here tonight to continue moving the city forward as we are. Um, it is it is more work, but I'm willing to do it, and I'm glad to do it. Uh, and I appreciate the kind words from Councilwoman Waldman. And I appreciate the support from George and all of his staff as they've helped me go through this. Uh, but uh, and, and, and we'll get through it. We've, we've got a couple more meetings, and then we'll have a new leader here in town. And I look forward to whoever sitting next to me uh, uh, building a relationship with them and continuing with the things that we're doing now. So um, I guess, Mr. Attorney, unless we need to do something else. Yeah, I mean, listen, the charter says you're supposed to appoint. Uh, there's no time there. And I think that this is a, re this is a reasonable approach. Some might criticize and say well, you sh it says you shall appoint. But I think in terms of the time, I think that you're fine. Um, and and uh, I would say that the the main change is that instead of getting two calls a day from John, I now get four calls a day from John and six emails as opposed to three and stuff we should be doing. So that's just a very I'm glad to ha you have you more involved, and it's, uh, of course, a pleasure. Okay. So I guess it, um, uh, do we need to vote on this or, no. or nothing? Okay. So that with the direction of the council then and the majority of the council as a, as a, as a whole, we have decided, uh, just for clarification, that we are going to wait on the vote of the of the uh, November 5th uh, ballot question, and then we will move forward from then on November 6th with a new mayor, whomever it may be. Any last comments or questions? Okay, so that brings that to an end. Uh, weekly business from the manager. Uh, no, no real business other to say. Thank you for your support tonight and uh, for your confidence in me and my staff. To my staff, thank you all very much. I mean, it's, it's amazing what a journey uh, we've been through together and uh, the support that you've all shown me. I'm very grateful. And uh, to you all, you know, we have uh, a lot of exciting things ahead. You've set a very ambitious program for the city. We have a lot of things to get done. So we're really energized about getting a lot of that stuff done. And uh, we look forward to an active year. Thank you. And finally, uh, thank you to uh, council members who made the trek to uh, Oakland. I know it was uh, 
uh, a long uh, journey to get there, but I think it was very helpful, particularly to the groups that were interested in the program and taking a very thorough due diligence, I think was very helpful in giving everybody an opportunity to really digest it and figure out what's in the best interest of everybody. So thank you all uh, for being there, and um, we'll see what uh, happens in six months as uh, they continue to review it. Thank you, Mr. Richards. Uh, other than the executive sessions, anything from the attorney? No, sir. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Shelley. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just have uh, two items. The first is just to remind everybody that early voting starts this week and that the uh, primary election is next Tuesday. It's important to make sure that you get out and vote um, so that you have a choice in who your representatives are here in the city of Homestead and also to make sure you vote during the primary because if you wait till November, your candidate may not be on the ballot in November. So. I just want to remind everybody that voting is very important and to make sure you get out and vote uh, this primary election. The second issue is just to bring something to the attention of my colleagues. Um, I'm the liaison for the Art South uh, board over there. And as you may or may not know, recently Ernesto Perez purchased the building in which Art South is housed in. And as a result, he, he has given them uh, three months to move out of that facility. He's also doubled their rent. So he, he's, it's put quite a hardship on Art South at this moment in time. Um, and so what I would do is encourage my fellow colleagues to give Ernesto a call and ask him to be, you know, to work with Art South until they can find uh, a different place to go to, until they can find a way to move out. Uh, they do have a lot of uh, youth organizations and youth programming that they are involved in, and it, it's difficult for them to be able to wrap that up and find places for these youth to go within three months. So if, if you guys could give him a call and just ask him to work with Art South to, to help the transition um, and then that way they can get their program in uh, up and running thereafter. So I, that's all I want to bring up. Thank you. Uh, Richard, is, can we write a form letter of, 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 of request to help them? Is that something we can do? You mean in order to solicit funds? To no, no, to, to, to send Mr. Perez a note on the city's behalf that we would like to see if, if well, that's assuming that everybody would like to support Art South and, and, and ask, uh, ask for help. You know, they've been a great, a great uh, neighbor of ours, and a great. Uh, yeah. I was program. just, dis I was just discussing with Mr. Uh, Gretzis that all of the, um, some of the uh, zoning applications, perm uh, approval applications that are that were part of the transaction that we had with uh, Dave Medical are on the PNZ agenda, up and coming PNZ agenda. So, um, I think it might be a little bit awkward at that point for for that to to make that kind of request. I think that you know, if, if, if you if individually, council people wanted to reach out to him and and say something. I think that would be okay. Make it clear that it's on behalf of yourself. But I think something might formal might um, sort of interfere with the quasi judicial process that they're going through, with since they're up for and application. Just, just may one, one quick. I, I do have a meeting scheduled with him and the Art South Board to try to find out if we can find a resolution and, and find a good transitionary period and, and program. Um, but it would be helpful if, if my colleagues could reach out to him and, and let them know that Art South is important to this community and it's been involved in this community for quite some time. And so to to force it out in such a quick manner would be very unfair. So, thank you, thank you, Mr. Shelley. Mr. Williams. Um, thank you. I'm sorry. I was so caught up in the um, listening here. Um, just want to remind my colleagues this Saturday uh, from 12 to 4, uh, I'm putting on a, a health fair for the community in the southwest area, and it's going to be from 12 to 4, so, well, 1 to 4, actually. So if you all are not doing much, you want to come out, uh, we're going to be doing HIV testing. We got some community partners uh, who have engaged uh, with us to do this work. And, um, and so just wanted to highlight that to the community. It's going to be at Blakely Park uh, from 1 to 4 on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Maldonado. Okay. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I uh, just want to uh, remind the community that uh, 98 installation dinner for building the future is that the key, the Bryant tree at Keysgate, and um, which is also a chamber uh, annual installation dinner, I'll be in attendance and uh, ask the community to please come on out and support them. And uh, also 
the last Thursday of the month is here and we will have our education committee meeting and we're going to be uh, discussing about bullying in the school. We've, we've uh, reached out to some a professional that's going to come and speak on behalf of uh, and, and, and help us to implement a program here within our areas. Our schools are already working, uh, you know, and, and bringing an introduction, introducing something in regards to bullying, but uh, we just requested some more help. So uh, this is uh, the last Thursday of the month. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Waldman. Thank you. I just want to reiterate um, what Mr. Shelley said. Vote, 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 vote because if you don't, you could lose your candidate in a primary. So October 1st is, to me, the most important day of election. And um, it, it's crazy. So we've had a lot of stuff going on, a lot of mail pieces going out. Um, do your research, know what the real truth is, and vote. So the second thing I wanted to talk about um, is, as Mr. Burgess kindly said, um, reminded everyone that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, I cannot stress to you how important it is to go out and get your, get your examinations. Um, I had a friend today, a dear sister friend, diagnosed with breast cancer. And, um, you know, it was a few years before she had her testing done. And, uh, and so that's why I was a little bit late today. And it happens. It happens around you. It happens to your mothers, your sisters, your, your, your sister-in-laws, your daughters doesn't matter what the age, it happens. So I beg you to remind everyone that you know, wear a pink ribbon on your shirt, you know, the little pins. Wear a pink ribbon in your hair. <laughs> Whatever you have to do, wear something, a bracelet, anything, just to remind people that it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, we're having an event here on October 5th, <coughs> excuse me, at the community center. There'll be information on the city of, city's website. Um, there's also another event in Lausner Park uh, where there's going to be a haircutting. Everybody is going to cut hair and for small donations. Um, I'm doing an event at the hospital for breast cancer awareness. And Begonia won't work. I know she's wonderful. She'll get everything on the city's website so you can go on there and find out. <coughs> my next... Um, my next announcement is, um, and it feels strange even to bring it up, but, it's, but since we brought up um, Commissioner um, Pepe Diaz's request to support, you know, I want to remind everybody and remind my colleagues that we will be putting flags on all the veterans' graves um, at our local cemetery and invite my colleagues to come out this year. And I know last year it was done kind of... Uh, late notice and and they couldn't make it but I hope that y'all can make it this year it's beautiful to see all the flags flying at, at um, on Veterans Day and we do it on Veterans Day um, also we do wreaths across America and we put wreaths on on the veterans graves um, at Christmas time we've been really short for money so uh, last year we were stretching it we were really stretching it but I'm hoping that the community will come together more so this year and we can work more as a group and, and make sure that happens because the veterans play such an important part of all of our history and we need to remember. My last request is from a little boy. I got a phone call from his mama this week. Um, he's had cancer off and on all of his, all of his life. He's, 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 he's little, but I think he's in fifth grade and he needs a computer can be a used computer, it can be a desktop, it could be a laptop, but he needs it for school and he needs it desperately. And he said, Miss Judy, the only thing I really need is for it to be virus free. And I said, that I know we can handle. So we need a computer. So if anybody wants to donate one, has one, whatever, but his little heart was broken because somebody had promised him one and we waited now five months and they didn't come through. So. If there's anybody out there with a computer that you can donate, this little, this, I'm getting a tap on my elbow. Say no more. Uh, he'll have it tomorrow. Okay. I'll get him a laptop. Just 
We'll take care of that. Terry, will you make sure he does that? My company would be more than happy <laughs> to provide it. Thank you so much, and yeah. I'll make and sure it's, you... And it's brand new in a box, too. Oh, so. okay. God bless. Okay. Thank you. And I'll make sure that you get to meet this little guy please, who's please. precious, precious, precious. So thank you. Thank you. Vote, vote, vote. And I hope my colleagues stick around for a lot longer. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, last week, I received an email from... Um, uh, Romanita Ford at CHI asking me to uh, sign a letter of support uh, as the mayor, well, or as the vice mayor acting as mayor or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, I didn't feel comfortable in doing it. Uh, one, I thought that uh, the, the entire council would need to support it if, if, if I was to take take the lead and sign this. Um, and two, the one, one reason was I, I didn't have information from them. So I don't know if you guys would like for me to acquire more information about what this signature exactly is for, um, other than it's to help them with some grant money or stuff. I mean, I'm willing to do it uh, somewhere down the road if, if I get the right stuff. I just wanted to make sure you guys are comfortable in doing it, if we can get the uh, exact grants and all that they're for, or if people had uh, other ideas of, of how we should sign it, if everybody should sign it or, or what, because we... Uh, need to work together up here and, and make sure that everybody's aware of everything that's being done um, on behalf of the city. So any questions or comments? Mr. Mr. Shelley. What, what are you are you looking for? Because I, I haven't well, seen... I, I got this letter, I believe it was last Wednesday, um, from, from CHI wanting me to, to sign it. Unfortunately, I was uh, Thursday uh, unavailable on Friday. They, they needed it, but I, I had told them that... Uh, I, I did not feel comfortable in signing it outright by myself, uh, that we were a council, that we're not one person. Whether I'm, I'm supposed to be the face of the council now or not, I, I, I felt that everybody needed to be aware of it and everybody needed to be uh, in agreement that we would support it or not. I asked them for more information. Um, the information that I was given is that uh, Mayor Wallace signs one, uh, Commissioner Moss signs one, and several other people sign one. But I had asked them for what grants this was for and stuff, and I've, I've yet to receive that. And that's what I was looking for more so from them was what grants. And then, two, if, if, if we look at it, is it something that we want to sign as a council? Okay. I mean, usually, City Attorney, just so I'm clear, I mean, usually when we do, a, uh, we support something as a whole. It's a resolution that we pass at a council meeting or a committee of the whole that we learn about and become educated on that we brought on as a whole. Anything else we can sign individually. Um, in our own capacity, individual council person capacity, but as far as a, a council ratified, that's usually done in more of a formal correct. format, correct? Correct. Okay. And and so do, that would I be do think if the council is going to do that, it's important that, uh, that there be some staff review of what's being asked for so that you know, you have some background about what you're... You know, what you're so that, that would be where I would see this going, is that whatever, whatever they're asking, because I, again, I don't know what, I haven't seen it. Um, well, I'll and pass so it. It doesn't, it just... Yeah, so what I would like to do then is this, is if that's the, you know, it needs to go through the process, whatever the normal process is, versus, say, tonight trying to make a decision on it. So I just wanted to, to bring it out, and, and that's the direction that I thought we should go as, as we move things forward. I think we need to move forward as one uh, a large group, or not large group, but as six, six people as a group, not one individual. And I, and I feel more comfortable if everybody's involved and everybody would uh, give their opinions on, on what it is. I guess perhaps the manager could get somebody to reach out to them and see exactly what uh, these uh, grants are and uh, exactly what other than a letter of support it, would, it entails the city to do. Thank you. Um, a couple of things. Uh, Mr. Brea, I know that you and I had met with the uh, Turnpike Authority a while back and we've been discussing with them uh, 152 and um, and the turnpike with a northbound entry for uh, westbound traffic, which would turn in front of the hotels and make a right. 152 traffic would go straight across, which would eliminate that. Can you just give uh, the citizens and, and other council members an update of, of where where we've gone since our meeting with with the turnpike authority and wh what their process, what stage of the process they're at, so everybody knows because that is a as the city's growing over there again with more homes being added and more businesses coming online, uh, it's becoming even a bigger problem that we need to make sure we're staying on top of them. So if you could tell us where we're at just so people know, I'd appreciate it. Correct. Uh, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, the Turnpike Authority has gone forward 
uh, since last time we brought this issue up here at the uh, at council meeting. Uh, and they're in the process right now of preparing what's called a PD&E study. It's a project uh, description and environmental study, basically, is what it is. What they do is they look at uh, different options and they uh, basically, at the end of the process, come up with, with a preferred alternative. Um, they've hired a consulting firm, it's CH2M Hill. Uh, they're the ones that are doing the work. They have uh, basically looked at three different alternatives, one that would require continuing to make that left turn and adding a, a traffic signal there, which I don't think the city um, uh, would, would go with that option, and I've made that clear to them. So that's not one of the options that they're looking forward to, but the other two um, involve making that right turn and uh, having a, a, a direct ramp uh, to the northbound from the westbound and also from 152nd going north. Um, they've been looking at basically the, between those two alternatives, they're looking at geometry issues. Um, they have certain rules that they need to follow in terms of uh, uh, stacking distances and, and uh, line of sight and those type of issues. But they, they think that they have a, an alternative that will work. They're going to present it to the Turnpike Authority for approval. And uh, hopefully once that takes place, then that will be, um, that alternative will be presented to the MPO for final approval as the uh, designated alternative. Once that, once that is done, it will get uh, basically into the discussion for funding at that point. It will become one of the projects that the Turnpike Authority will promote for finding additional funding to go forward with the um, formal design and then afterwards uh, actual construction. <coughs> so that's where we're at right now. So it's uh, a lot has happened since last time we, uh, we brought this issue up. Okay, thank you. Um, one, I know that we've taken care of those uh, clothing collection boxes. And now another thing that I'd like to see if we can target is, that, and I notice, I don't know if I'm just noticing them now or if they've been there a long time, but there seem to be a lot of these flyer boxes uh, the, the cheap plastic ones that they put uh, things in that become graffiti written all over them and stuff like that. And I don't know what our process is for, for getting those under control, but uh, if you ride down Chrome Avenue, you can probably count 40 of them between here and uh, uh, the police station um, all over the place. So I don't know if that's something that we can get the code compliance to look at and see uh, if there's anything there, and if not, perhaps we can start... Um, the process like we did on the uh, on the on the on the collection boxes, so that we can keep our sidewalks and streets clean because they're. I guess the, up the question would be, what is it that you're trying to accomplish? Because I certainly have been through this on a number of occasions in I'm cities to, to thin them out yeah. and to make them uniform, and a lot of legal work was done to make sure that you, what you could do legally. And so some communities have the standardized boxes and you require a fee and you require, you know, basically community boxes and that thins them out pretty well because a, a bunch of these junk, junky ones they don't want to pay. Uh, so if that's where you'd head, then we could go and get you some model ordinances. If you're looking for something different, it would just be uh, helpful to, to understand what you're trying to accomplish. I, like, like with those other collection boxes, would like to have control of them. And, and, and yeah. If they want to put something out, then it needs to meet some sort of criteria. Or I mean, it's like night. it's like day to night when you change when you change the ordinance to require some sort of a community type box. Yeah. It's like day and night in terms. Perhaps of you could bring us uh, uh, one or two samples or sure. something. Sure, absolutely. Or send them out to us and let us read them or whatever. But I think it, it you know, is there? I, I don't know. My eyes are popping up everywhere out of out of out of, out of everywhere. Maybe I'm riding around the city more now or something, but I don't know. Uh, there seem to be a lot of them that I hadn't noticed in the past. So A lot of the little junky ones, when it's free and they can put a little plastic one out there, they don't care. Right. But and when you require them to pay a fee and be part of a, a community box, they don't want to do it anymore and they go away. Right. And there seem to be a lot of graffiti written on them. Um, so maybe right. you could get us a couple sure. ordinances to look at and, and Chief, maybe Crystal and could, could get uh, you know look and s see what the, exactly uh, her... Uh, Department's allowed to do. Um, one other thing, um, as, as I was out riding over to, to uh, James Archer Smith Park last week, and I took a 
down uh, Northwest 11th, there's a lot of dumpsters that seem to be sitting out on the road and all that, and it's very unsightly over that way. Is there any way we can, uh, and I mean, that's the road that people take to go over to the park. And it looked horrible going over that way with dumpsters sitting out on the road. Uh, and just it really looks bad. And, I'm, you know, as we try to improve our city, these are things that we got to work on. So I don't know if it's the, the dumpster, uh, and I'm not blaming anybody. If that's the only spot they got to put them, perhaps we need to look at where they're placed over there. But if uh, when people are going around, uh, if solid waste guys can take a look at that and see. I mean, because it just is, is, I had some people in the car from out of town who rode over there to go to the dog park. They were looking around going, wow. And you have six or seven, eight dumpsters right on the road in one block. It really looked bad. So uh, maybe we need to, to, to look at that whole situation and what we're doing with them also. Um, I've got a couple things. Uh, we've got the Patches Spaghetti Dinner this Saturday night at the Women's Club. I believe it starts at, from 5.30 to 8.30. They always serve a great meal. Um, and then in, in December, for anybody that may be interested in, in being, um, there's going to be another Homestead Rock and Rib Fest at Harris Field. It's going to go uh, from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. So if anybody's interested in being some sort of a vendor, they can reach out to uh, Mr. Larry Roth at 305-979-8424. And then one last thing is please don't, remember th uh, uh, please don't forget that September was uh, Pediatric uh, Cancer Month. We gave a proclamation to a woman earlier tonight who had lost her uh, seven-year-old son as we roll right into uh, breast awareness. But uh, please, not, let's not forget the pediatric cancer and, uh, and, and help them out as we all look for a cure for all different types of cancer. So with that, I will say oh, one last thing. Unless there's an objection from the council, I do not plan on doing any uh, state of the city address. So if anybody has that date saved of uh, October the 18th, they can take it off of their calendar. Uh, if Patricia wants to do one, she can do one. Absolutely. <laughs> but I would love to do my reports, though, if, I, if you're met. Absolutely. <laughs> you said glowing things about me. <laughs> right. You're a fire. Um, you can use, you can the best things for last. <laughs> I thought so I'd flatter me. Patricia. Okay. In that case, I, I would the like a state last. of the city address. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll be very brief. December 7th is the Rock and Rib Fest. Right. December 14th is the Chili Cook-Off Kids Competition, where schools, with the support of their PTAs, will enter into their chili to see which team will reign supreme. So I invite all of our schools to bring your A-game. We will send out literature to schools and invite the community to come out and be a part of our Chili Cook-Off school competition being facilitated by our Mayor's Youth Council. I'd also like to thank Councilman Wallman and Councilman Maldonado for supporting the Mayor's Youth Council, financially supporting them for their trip to Washington, D.C. this summer. Pressure, my other colleagues. So thank you, you two, for supporting them. Of course. And if you have anything left, just send it over to NYC. <laughs> thank you so much. And I also would like to join the chorus of my colleagues in encouraging our residents to get out and vote on October 1st. We have to make some game-changing decisions up here in the next year or two. And I know my colleagues agree we like to hit home runs. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for our residents to pick some great team players to be a part of this team who can talk about and sift through complex material, such as where are we going to place our police? What are we going to do with the Seminole Theater and the revitalization of downtown? There are some tough um, tasks that are before us and it's very important for you, our residents, to elect the right people who can get up here and make it happen. So with that, I will see you at the polls, thanking you for coming out to vote, and I hope to see you there. I have nothing further. Thank you, Thank you. and my apologies. I, I went down the list and I don't know what happened. <laughs> anyway, uh, motion to adjourn. Moved, second. Moved and second. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>